This presentation by Matt Fryer and Logan Veith covers internal resorption. Our presentation will cover the definition, demographics, sign and symptoms, radiographic presentation, diagnoses, treatment, and summary. Internal resorption is defined as the resorption of dentin by odontoclasts from within the pulp chamber and or root canal space. It is poorly understood but is generally thought to be due to an inflammatory response to trauma or infection. The response stimulates the formation and activation of odontoclasts within the pulp which resorb the dentin surrounding the pulp space. In order for internal resorption to progress, odontoclasts must continue to receive nutrition and the pulp must therefore remain at least partially vital. Internal resorption is a relatively rare condition with one study approximating at 0.01 to 1% prevalence. There is no racial predilection, however there is a slight male predilection. A recent study using electron microscopy has shown that two-thirds of the teeth analyzed with pulpitis or necrosis had some sign of internal resorption. However, teeth with healthy pulps showed no signs. Internal resorption often is an in incidental finding on a radiograph and presents without any symptoms. If there are symptoms, they would be the same as those of pulpitis. These could include lingering pain after a stimulus such as cold or sweet, or persistent pain due to pressure. The clinical signs of internal resorption would also be similar to those of pulpitis, including sensitivity to percussion testing or lingering pain upon administration of vitality tests. Often it is associated with large carious lesions or recurrent caries under restorations. Advanced lesions may discolor the crown or have sinus tracts present. The main sign, however, is the radiographic appearance, which will be covered next. Internal resorption is normally seen as a symmetrical, round, well-defined radiolucent lesion on a tooth. It is continuous with the root canal space, and the pulp space seems to appear enlarged. It can be any size within the limits of a single tooth. If the root is perforated, the lesion stretches into surrounding periodontal space. Accompanying signs of apical periodontitis may also be seen. Lesions normally occur in a single tooth, but if there is trauma to multiple teeth, you can see multiple lesions in those teeth. Due to its characteristic radiographic presentation, there are few differential diagnoses. The first is external cervical root resorption. However, it can be differentiated by using different angled radiographs that will show that the lesion started externally. If there is a high uncertainty, a comb beam computed tomography scan should be employed. The other two differential diagnoses include root caries and cervical abfraction. Both of these would show radiolucencies superimposed on the pulp space. However, different radiographic angles would show a normal pulp space. Also, caries of this extent would be detectable clinically by probing. The treatment of internal resorption largely depends on the structural integrity of the remaining tooth. If the tooth is in poor condition, it will normally be extracted. If sufficient tooth structure remains, then root canal therapy is indicated. Due to the shape of the internal defect, normal endodontic instrumentation and obturation will usually not be successful. So debridement with chemical means such as sodium hypochlorite and calcium hydroxide is often necessary. Obturation is usually accomplished with thermoplastic gutta percha. In the case of root perforation, some cases have been successfully treated in the past with MTA or calcium hydroxide. When internal resorption lesions are present, the clinical presentation is usually asymptomatic. It can be associated with any of the symptoms of pulpitis, including pain and sensitivity to various stimuli. It is often associated with trauma, deep carious lesions, and any other etiology that causes pulpal exposure. Internal resorption is diagnosed due to radiographic findings. It is commonly appearing as a single, round, well-defined radiolucent lesion continuous with the pulp space. The treatment of choices are either extraction or root canal therapy, depending on the condition of the tooth. The following sources provided images for our presentation. And these sources provided information for the content. Thank you.